Listen to my show, Not On My Watch, on Mondays at 6 p.m. Right here on Worship Center Radio, Detroit's number one for gospel. Hi, this is Prophet Blaine, and you're listening to Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. Hi, I'm Pastor Constance Harvey from the Rose of Sharon Christian Assembly, and I can be heard every Thursday at 8 p.m. on Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. Join us. Quiet on the set. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Okay, let's go. Hi, I'm Blaine Irving. And if you're listening to me right now and you're listening in your car, you are probably listening to us from the TuneIn app on your phone. If you're listening from anywhere else, you could be listening to us from the computer or possibly the TuneIn app on Roku TV. Regardless, you are listening to the best station in Detroit, the platform of champions, Worship Center Radio. Are you willing to support a ministry that's doing work for the Lord worldwide? We understand that it's hard wanting to make sure that you sow into good ground. Well, Worship Center Radio is good ground. Reaching as many as 50 countries worldwide, we have put the Great Commission given to us by Jesus Christ in action. Support us as we continue to do the work. Go to www. WorshipCenterRadio.net And on the right hand side Click the Donate Now area And send us your gift So we may continue to broadcast Throughout the world And bring to you Programming That elevates you To the next level in God We thank you for your support And continue to listen to Worship Center Radio The platform of champions From Detroit to the nations You are listening to the world's Number one Christian station Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. Hi, this is Evangelist Tammy Laster, and coming up next is my show, Not On My Watch, right here on Worship Center Radio. tuned in to the Worship Center Radio, the platform of champions. I am glad you decided to listen in on tonight. Um, The Lord has given me a word. It's been stirred in my belly for quite some time. So I am so excited that you decided to join me on tonight. But before I get into what God has given me in this hour and this season, I would like to pray for each and every one of you that are listening. I'm going to pray, but before I do, let me just say, you may also call in to the Worship Center radio station at area code 248-796-8241. Again, the number is 248-796-8241. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we honor you. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus that you have gone before us. We thank you, Lord God, for angelic protection. We thank you, Lord God, for keeping our families on today, Lord God. Father, we thank you that we have use of our limbs and every faculty in our bodies, Lord God. And Father, I just thank you right now in the name of Jesus that I don't take it for granted myself that you allowed me to see another day, Lord, because some people did not wake up on today. And I am truly grateful. I am truly thankful. And Lord, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I lift up the name of Jesus right now, the name above every 
every name, above every situation, and ever above every circumstance in this world, Lord God. I decree and declare that the name of Jesus will be lifted up in this nation, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for your church, Lord God. I pray in Jesus' mighty name that the church learn and come together as one and be unified as one. I pray that the church will walk in love like never before in the name of Jesus, Father God. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, Father, that the church learn, Lord God, and understand the importance of being unified, Lord God, because there are strength in numbers, Lord God. Lord, we are supposed to be fit jointly together, Lord God. So I pray and decree from this day forward that the church be united and stand as one in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for listening in on tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, dealing with a little challenge with, with my voice, but to God be the glory anyhow. I want to share with you on tonight a scripture in Romans that um, has been ringing in my spirit for quite some time. And the Lord has been speaking to me about this, this uh, scripture. And it reads in Romans 13, beginning at verse 11 through 13, it says, And that, knowing the time, that now is, the, is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believe. Verse 12, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Verse 13, let us walk honestly as in the day not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. And I, I've been reading this over and over, and the Lord has been speaking to me. And the Lord, one of the things that he keeps saying to me, <coughs> excuse me, the church is sleepwalking. The church is under some type of anesthesia. But it's time to awake. It is time to awake. Church, awake. Come up out of your sleep. Come up out of your slumber. You're walking around like you're anesthetized, like there's anesthesia, that you're, like you're under some type of anesthesia. But at this point, <coughs> the anesthesia by now should have worn off. <coughs> the church is sleepwalking. Sleepwalking is a disorder that causes people to walk when they are asleep. Sleepwalking happens when you go from a deep stage to a lighter stage of sleep. Wake up, church. When you are sleepwalking, when a person sleepwalks, he doesn't respond to the events around him and sometimes does not even remember sleepwalking. The church is sleepwalking because there are things going on in the world right now and we are not responding 
to what's going on. We are sitting back, letting the devil roam the earth to and fro. The devil is having a field day in our families. He's having a field day in our minds, in our emotions, because the church wants to sleep. Darkness is prevailing all around us, and the church is accepting it, and this should not be so. The devil is using distractions around us to keep us from tapping in and tuning in to the spirit of God and to the voice of God. God is giving us directions. He's, he's telling us what to do, but because of the distractions, our, our minds are focused on what's going on around us. We are the church. We are the church of the living God. And the Bible says that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So if, what, if the spirit of the Lord is in us like we know it is in us, why are, why are we letting things take place? Why are we not praying? Why are we not fasting like we are told to do? The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 that we are to pray without ceasing. We are not praying without ceasing. We pray when we need a, a breakthrough for a moment, and then we receive the breakthrough and we stop praying. The Bible commands us to pray without ceasing. There's so many tragic events that are taking place in the world. Excuse me. <clears throat> the world is infiltrated with darkness. There's darkness all around us. The Bible says that we are in this world, but we are not to be of this world. That does not mean that we are to be walking around like zombies. That does not mean that we're not supposed to be alert and paying attention to what's going on around us. We are to be watchful. We are to pray, like I said, without ceasing. Where are the watchmen on the wall? Where are the intercessors? Where are the, where are the gatekeepers? Where are you? This is a clarion call. Where are the gatekeepers? Where are the watchmen? Where are the spiritual snipers? The Bible says, <coughs> excuse me, that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. God has called, called us out of darkness, not to just be calling us out of darkness, but he has called us out of darkness to do a work in the kingdom and for the kingdom. We are kingdom people. We are to be kingdom minded. We are warriors in the kingdom of God and for the kingdom of God. We must do as the Lord told Isaiah to do when Israel was sinning. And that is cry aloud. 
anything less than a loud cry will not even disturb the enemy. We must cry out. We must take our stance as a royal priesthood. We must take our stance as children of the Most High God. This cry must come from the watchman. This cry must come from the gatekeepers and the intercessors that God has placed on the wall. Some of you were on the wall and you came off the wall. God's saying, now is not the time to come off the wall. Now is not the time to be timid. Now is not the time to be shy and holding our peace. Not, especially not when the enemy and his imps are running rampant. Not when you have family members and friends that you deal with every day that are in bondage. Now is not the time to be silent. Now is not the time to keep quiet. Cry aloud. It is time, church, to take hostages for the kingdom of God. It's time to do some spiritual drive-bys. It's time to begin to call out the names of families and friends in your prayer time. Call them out of darkness. Now is the time. It's time for us to be snipers like never before. And I'm speaking to the, the ones who call yourselves intercessors. It's time to put down your plate. It's time to eat carpet. It's time to fast like never before. Like I said, there are so many things that are taking place in the world, tragic events. I, I, I'm, I, I'm from California, and that event that took place last week in San Bernardino, is right where my house is located in that county. And my daughter works not far from where that tragic event took place. When it happened, people seemed to be shocked. They, they, they were, and, and, and it's, Oh, I understand when things happen like that, you know, we cry, we feel sad, but we as God's children, I, I don't believe we, we should be shocked by these things that take place. I'm going to share <coughs> when 9-11 happened, September 2011. There were about 10 or 12 of us that felt an urgency to come together and pray in the city of Los Angeles. It was as if we were hearing an alarm going off in the spirit realm. And we gathered together in a room and we interceded for almost seemed like 12 hours. And I remember getting home after our, we were interceding and praying. The, the Lord said, pray for the city of Los Angeles. And I remember getting home at 3 a.m. that morning. And I, I rested for about three hours. And my sister called me from Chicago at 6 a.m. And she said, did you see what's happening on the news? And I turned on the television, and I could see where the Twin Towers in uh, New York had been. Uh, the, the planes went through the building and where it happened in several other locations. 
And I said, my God. Uh, and I learned later after listening to all the, uh, the CNN uh, in MSNBC reports and all of that, I learned later that Los Angeles was a target. And one of the terrorists said that they could not get through to Los Angeles. And I believe that God, there, there is an alarm now going off in the spirit realm and we have to be so sensitive to the spirit of God and know when God wakes you up at 2 a.m. in the morning, that's an alarm. When God wakes you up at 3 a.m. And, and sometimes you might lie down at 10, at 10 p.m. at night and it seems like you can't go to sleep. That's an alarm. That is sometimes the Lord speaking and saying, can you... Take these few hours and pray. Can you, can you just pray? Can you watch for this hour? We must stop church functioning as a user-friendly church. We, and what I mean by that is the, we want to uh, pacify people. We want to make people happy because we're concerned with keeping the numbers in the ministry. That's fine. But it's time to be radical. It's time for the church to be radical like never before. We have to be radical for Christ. We have to be radical for the kingdom of God. Everybody in the church, not everybody, but you have those in the church that are seeking titles. Everybody wants to preach. Everybody wants to be made famous or become famous in the church. But what about the souls of the people? What about people that are lost on a daily basis? Time out for all the th theatrics in the church. Too many actors in the church. Too many actresses in the church. The Bible says, he who wins souls is wise. God wants us to be soul winners. He wants us to be soul winners. Not, not someone that wants to be, have, have a title and, and wear your title on your shoulder. God is concerned about souls. And that's a compa I'm very compassionate about winning souls. God gave me not on my watch because one is his watch. And he has, he has given me a mandate to first let the world know that he hates sin. And two, that Anybody I come in contact with, they are going to know about Jesus Christ. They are going to know that heaven and hell is real. They are going to know that God gave his only begotten son so that they might live. There should never be a time that, let me just say, it's no accident where you live. It's no accident where you work. And we have to be sensitive to the needs of individuals around us. We have to be sensitive to know how a person may be dealing with depression. A person may be contemplating suicide. We have to be so in tune with the Spirit of God that we feel what God feels. We have to be compassionate people. There are people that are dying and going to hell. And we have to have the compassion that God has for people on a daily basis. Believe it or not, 
we are being watched. Especially if you say you are a child of the king. We are being watched. The enemy is watching. He's watching for any little slip up. He's watching for us to slip up. He's watching to watch us fall and, or even commit a sin so he could point the finger and say, I thought you were a child of God. <coughs> there are people that we deal with on a daily basis. Do they know Jesus? Because of the character that you display. Can they look at you and say there's something different about you? Can they look at you and say there's something so different about you? What must I do to be saved? Or do you look like the world? Do you talk like the world? Do you act like the world? There should be a difference in our character, our conduct, and our conversation if we say we represent Christ in this earth. <coughs> God is holding us responsible for our character what we say, and what we do. He saved us. He gave his only begotten son so that we might live. I don't know anybody in this world that would ever do that with their child. That was the ultimate sacrifice. Church, we have to wake up. We must be ministers for the kingdom of God. And that doesn't mean that you have to uh, have the title of a, of a minister. We are all ministers in Christ Jesus. I heard the Lord say this morning that the church is passing up church trying to get to church. The church is passing up people along the way of trying to get to a building, trying to get to an edifice. We're supposed to be the church. There are, I, I, I'm, I'm just compassionate about people's souls. I, I am, I am, I, I love people and I don't want to run anyone away that is lost because they don't see the love of Christ in me. You have to be careful how you deal with people. You have to be careful how you treat people. And I am seeing in the body of Christ that we mistreat one another worse than the, a worldly person would mistreat us. We slander one another. We gossip about one another. And if you're doing that around somebody that's not saved, it's a wonder they don't want to have to do anything with the church. Pay attention to those that are around you. Like I said, it's no accident that you live where you live amongst the people that you live around. How many souls have you saved today? How, how many souls, uh, uh, how, are, how much are you allowing the spirit of God to use you to save an individual? Or are you too embarrassed to talk about the kingdom of God? Are you too embarrassed to talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ? 
I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And I am going to declare Christ until the day I pass from this earth. It's, start, it's time, church, to, to cry out for the deliverance of people, for the salvation of people. This is what the Lord has placed on me to say today. And I hope that you not just listen to what the Lord is saying but you take what he is saying today, take it seriously. It's time to grow up, church. It's time to mature. You can honestly, let me just say, you can know when you are maturing in the things of God, when the things that hurt God hurt you. Let me say that again. You can know you are maturing in the things of God when the things that hurt God hurt you. You know that you are growing when you find yourself fighting sin in your personal life. If you ever get to the place that you are comfortable with sin and you feel no conviction, you are in a dangerous place with God. Let me say that again. When you find yourself in a place as a child of God, you are comfortable with sin and you feel no conviction. You are in a dangerous place with God. God called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are to be light bearers. We are to be the salt of the earth. Why are we to be the salt of the earth? Because there are people in the earth that need the salt. We are to be the salt of the earth. Like I said, we live in this world, but we are not of this world. There should be something that people recognize and sense about you. Some of you God has called out of such dark places. I know I was delivered out of, of a dark place. Some of you were delivered from drugs, delivered from alcohol and pornography and lust and gambling. God delivered you from those things. He called you and delivered you out of those things. He didn't do it just to be doing it. And it's not, some of the things that we have gone through have not always been about us. Because see, what God delivered you from, the same thing he delivered you from, I guarantee you, people that are dealing with what you have been delivered from will cross your path. What are you going to do, church, when they cross your path? What are, you, what are those people, what are you going to do when God has delivered you from pornography and somebody crosses your path that's dealing with that same spirit, that is bound by that same spirit? What are you going to do? Are you going to sit back and let them keep dealing with it? Or are you going to talk about them and tell them it's, that's not cool and that's not right for you to be dealing with that? No, what you need to do is tell and share your testimony of how God delivered you from that thing. Some people are dealing with, with issues and they don't think that they can be delivered from those issues because 
nobody has ever told them about God. Nobody has ever told them that God delivers. So they think, oh, I'm just this way. They don't realize that some people don't realize that it's a, that they're in bondage. But those of you that understand and know what bondage is and how God delivered you from such a thing, you must share your testimony with others. People are delivered from just hearing your testimony and how good God has been to you and how good God has, how God has delivered you from something. We cannot be ashamed of sharing our testimonies with people. God told me 15 years ago, about 15 years ago, that I had a pulpit ministry. That doesn't mean that I'd be standing in a pulpit even though I've seen it, but that's not what God was referencing at that time. God, what, he, what God was saying to me was he gave me a ministry to pull people out of the pit of hell, to pull people out of the pits of bondage. We all should have a pulpit ministry. Awake, church. Awake. Awake. Awake, church. We are the body of Christ. We are jointly fit together. At least we're supposed to be. And it's time for us to have holy Ghost boldness like never before. We need to get righteously indignant about the sin and the things that are going on around us. And instead of accepting what the enemy is serving in this earth. But what's happening in the church, the enemy is using us to sow discord amongst ourselves it's a tactic of the enemy we're competing against one another in the church and that should not be so there's confusion there's strife amongst us as children of God and it shouldn't be I know some of you probably don't want to hear a word like this but I'm speaking the truth and I know I'm speaking the truth because I see it with my own eyes in the body of Christ. There's so much discord with, with brethren, amongst brethren. Church, we must not forget how dark it really is. We must not forget that the Bible says the enemy is roaming the earth, seeking whom he may devour. Let me ask you, will you let him devour your child? Will you let him devour a family member? And you're, you're, you're apostle so-and-so and you're bishop so-and-so and minister this and evangelist that. Will you allow the enemy to devour your family? Will you allow him to devour your children? He's seeking the earth, roaming the earth, seeking whom he may devour. That's his job description or one of his job descriptions. What are you going to do, church? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to continue to be sleep or sleepwalking or are you going to awake and be about the father's business? The Bible says, "Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else shall be added unto you." 
We're seeking things. We're seeking to, uh, to be blessed. We're seeking monetary blessings. We're seeking material blessings. Seek first the kingdom of God. What is it to seek first the kingdom of God? When you seek the kingdom of God, you are in the face of God asking God, God, what is it that you want me to do? God, what is it that you want me to pray about? God, what is it that I need to pray about? Who do you want me to pray for, God? When you are about God's business, God will be about your business. Plain and simple. But we're, we're, the, the world, the church is so caught up in seeking things that we're missing the mark. We're missing what God has called all of us to do. We are to be soul winners, and I can't stress it enough. We are to be soul winners for the kingdom of God. You want to agitate the devil? You want to you wanna get him on his last nerve, I challenge you to be a soul winner. I challenge you to be a soul winner. Time to awake, church. Time to awake. It, it's a tragedy that you don't see so many souls being saved in churches and it's because real revivals are not taking place real revival is not taking place they're having revival at the revival nobody's being revived people are returning and coming to church the next sunday the same way they were the Sunday before. Nobody's being delivered, set free. But yet we have so many revivals that are taking place in the church. We have to lift up the name of Jesus. The Bible says, when his name is lifted up, God said, I will draw all men unto me. Lift up the name of Jesus like never before. We must lift up the name of Jesus in this nation. And I decree and declare that his name shall be lifted up and every idol in this nation will be brought low. Every idol in this nation will be brought to ruin in the name of Jesus. This is a clarion call, children of God. We need to come out and be who God has called us to be. If the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is on the inside of you, there is no excuse. There is no excuse. God did not save you to be a wimp. He saved you to be a winner. God saved you to be a warrior. That same power, like I said, that raised Jesus from the dead is on the inside of you. We are not wimps. And I know some of you, when you were in the world, you were not a wimp in the world. You were a fighter. And God wants you to be a fighter in the kingdom of God, just like you were a fighter in the world. It's time to stop playing church. We are champions. I said we are champions. We are not chipmunks or champ chimpanzees. We are champions. And we need to take on the mind of a champion. We need to take on the mind of, of a warrior, the mind of a winner. 
time to be about God's business. I, I can't stress it as much as I'm feeling it. It is time to stop playing church. Church, wake up. This is what the Lord put in my mouth to say. He is saying, awake church. We are about to see some things that hit the earth. We think that we've, we're seeing tragedies now. We have not seen anything yet. Well, church, you have to be watchful. You have to be on alert. You have to continue to pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. We have to be conscious of what's going on around us. We have to be so tapped in to the spirit of God. We have to be in tune. Our, our frequency has to be in tune with the spirit of God. God is speaking. And we cannot allow the things that are going around us, on around us, and, and the things that are happening to us, to, we cannot allow those things to get, off, get us off guard and, to, and distract us and, and, and cause us to miss what God is saying in this hour. We cannot allow the distractions to, to come and take us off course and, and we miss what God is instructing us to do in this hour. There are people dying without even knowing Christ. We have to come to a place of letting people know that God gave his only begotten son that we might live. There's someone now I'm, I'm sensing you, you're dealing with some some things, and, and you think you're too far gone in what you're involved in. But the Lord is saying, I, I, I am near and I am here. All you have to do is call on the name of Jesus. The Lord is saying that my arm is not too short to deliver, nor is my ear deaf to your prayers. You, that you have not done something so bad that God cannot save you, that God cannot deliver you. When Jesus was on that cross, everything that we would ever deal with or everything that we would ever go through was laid upon him. It, it, and, and it said, it is finished. That means everything that we would ever experience, the pain, the hurt, the sin, the, the whatever, any sickness or disease. The Bible says when everything was laid upon him, Jesus was laying on that cross and he was interceding for us on Calvary. And what happens in intercession, when you intercede for someone, you take on what that person is dealing with. That's real intercession. But a lot of people don't want to get that far into intercession. But Jesus laid on that cross. He was interceding for us. And I could imagine at some point and sometime, he, 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 he said, Lord, this, this is just too much. But he knew he had to fulfill the prophecy that was spoken over his life. He had to lay there and endure everything that we would ever go through. Everything that we would ever experience was laid upon him. And it was said, it is finished. So I don't, I don't, I, I'm, I'm sensing and feeling somebody right now. You, you feel like 
Nobody loves you. You feel like what you've done, God cannot love you. God loves you unconditionally. He loves you in spite of who you are, in spite of what you've done. We, we, God is a, an a, a God, he, he, I tell you, his love is unconditional, meaning there are no conditions. The Bible says he gave his only begotten son. I don't, that to me is the epitome of love. So whoever you are, know God loves you. In spite of what your family may has, have said about you, in spite of what the enemy may be speaking in your ear, and I pray now in the mighty name of Jesus that J God meets you right now where you are. I speak and declare the deliverance of the Lord over your life, whoever you are. You are not too far gone that God can't save you. You are not too far gone that God can't deliver you. He's a delivering God. He's an awesome God. He's a loving God. He's a mighty God. He's a God that never leaves you nor forsakes you. I'm, I'm sensing that now. And, and, and whoever you are listening, whoever you are watching, Know that God loves you. God does not have favorites. He loves us all unconditionally. Church, we must be alert. There are people dealing with depression, dealing with suicide. We work with people every day. We even go to church Sunday after Sunday, Bible study after Bible study, and we sit right next to people that are dealing with suicide, depression, lust, pornography. Are you sensitive enough to know when a person is crying out for help? We must be alert, church. We must awake. The Lord has said, now is the time to awake. Now is the time to pray without ceasing. My family, friends, anybody I come in contact with, I'm going to tell you this, and, and those of you that know me know I don't play when it comes to prayer. I don't just say, I'm going to pray for you. I pray right then and there. You don't want to, you don't, you see, that's another thing that the church does. Oh, girl, I'll pray for you. Somebody sharing something with you and telling you what they're going through. We The first thing we say I'll pray for you. No, you pray for them right then and there. Because it could just be you may never see that person again. We must take every opportunity that God gives us to pray for a soul. Whether they're saved or lost. Wake up, church. It's time to wake up. I thank you for listening in to my show, Not On My Watch. It's a show that God gave me that name because he's holding me accountable for people that I deal with on a daily basis. He's holding me accountable for their souls, for their salvation. And like I said earlier, it's not my watch, but it's what he gave me. It's the Lord's watch. And what I want to hear before I, when I leave this earth and I stand before the Father, I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Good night to you all. I love you all. God bless. 
Tune in next Monday, 6 p.m., not on my watch.